Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Jacob Zuma provided an update on work being carried out under government's Operation Pekisa. Terence Kremer was at the briefing this week and joins me to discuss some of the highlights. Hi Terence. Hi Tracy. So the first major focus of Operation Pekisa has been the ocean economy. Can you walk us through some of the progress that has been made under this? Well, the, the report back did focus on the ocean economy primarily because that started last year and was the first initiative. And it also dealt with other um, work streams that are happening under Operation Pekisa, which is really taken from the Malaysian model of big, fast results where you bring government, business and other stakeholders together to try and alleviate log jams in certain sectors that are constraining investment and growth. So it's uh, the ocean economy aspect that was, the, w was there were a lot of deliberations around what could be done in the area of aquaculture, offshore drilling for oil and gas, uh, and marine engineering, and also the governance of the ocean economy. We, there's, there's a feeling that we aren't really exploiting the resources South Africa has in this regard and the amount of vessel flow that's going past our shores as well as the oil rig repair business that could uh, arise, especially as more and more rigs uh, develop off African shores. So that's been the focus. I think the report back showed that there's only been uh, limited progress in a lot of these areas. Offshore oil and gas in particular, there's a lot of, there was a lot of uh, interest and hype around that, but very uh, limited progress has been reported. There was more progress, I think, in the area of aquaculture where uh, uh, we're seeing some developments around uh, fish farms and uh, leasing of areas for, for uh, aquaculture activities and projects. There's also announcements around some new harbours that are going to be proclaimed and uh, ways to facilitate small harbour management because really we, we've got a big focus on our major ports where Transnet, the National Ports Authority, really administers and governs and there's a view that we need to start focusing on some of these smaller harbours around South Africa's shores. So I think it was sort of a mixed picture, um, and in particular in oil and gas, there was not a lot of progress reported. Well, in terms of oil and gas, do you think that the progress that has been achieved will spur investment? Well, I think there's a num the main constraint at the moment is the, a legislative one and a market one. So those are the two big problems. The market, as we know, for uh, oil and gas uh, has collapsed from well over $100 a barrel a year ago to now, you know, we're sitting around the $50 a barrel for, for oil. And the gas prices have also come down. So there's that immediate uh, headwind to uh, foreign direct investors and domestic investors, uh, you know, developing offshore um, drilling campaigns, and especially in a, a f sort of frontier environment where you don't really know whether the gas and the oil exists. But the other big uh, impediment at the moment is legislative. And I think uh, apparently a lot of work has been done in under Operation Pakisa to have a meeting of minds between the private sector and government around the, the legislative environment that would be more facilitatory of uh, investment into exploration and development offshore South Africa. And uh, that is really hinges on the, the Mineral and Petroleum Resources Development Act, which is in a parliamentary process. The amendments that were announced a couple of years ago really shocked the oil and gas industry and really, uh, I think, pushed them back into their shells because uh, th there wasn't only an indication that there'd be a 20% free carry by, by the state in any projects they developed, but there was also an indication that the government might take additional uh, shares if in certain projects if they felt they were strategic. And then there was also the added element of BE in all these projects, the Black Economic Empowerment. So the whole shareholding thing was a bit unclear for investors. But there were also a number of other issues around the way um, oil and gas licenses would be governed um, that had the uh, industry a bit worried. At the moment, it's, it's managed by the Petroleum Agency of South Africa, which is seen as fairly independent and efficient. There was a view that that was going to be moved to the Department of Mineral Resources, so that had raised some eyebrows. And then there was the whole issue of strategic minerals, whether the oil and gas could be declared strategic and that beneficiation would be forced before uh, any export, which could, which could affect um, you know, the pricing of products. So there were a number of areas that I think that are loose ends that need to be tied up. And our understanding is that uh, the Pakisa process did help in, in tying some of those loose ends. 
but that we still need to see that legislation going through Parliament and we need to see a much more facilitatory uh, environment for oil and gas drilling and also probably a recognition that this is not a mature industry in South Africa. It's lumped together with mining under the NPRDA, but it's really a frontier industry. We don't really have a lot of oil and gas or, uh, exploration and development offshore South Africa. Now there are other focus areas under Operation Pekisa. One of the major areas that has come up is mining. What does this entail? Yes, the next big focus area, uh, Operation Pekisa has had this ocean economy. It's also had quite an interesting initiative around what they call the Ideal Clinic, uh, where the, there's a sort of template that's come out for clinics that will be developed in South Africa uh, across the country. And uh, that seems to be steady progress seems to be made. Over 200 of these clinics are going to be de developed over the next few years. But uh, the next big focus area is the area of the mining Pakisa. Now this comes at a time when commodity prices have declined massively. There's the prospect of a lot of job cuts on the horizon. And there's also a feeling that South Africa's competitiveness as a mining destination has declined massively. One, because of uh, you know, um, the legislative uncertainties, the policy uncertainties, but also there's been a hostile uh, labor relations environment. Productivity really hasn't improved. And we've seen a massive increase in uh, input costs uh, from uh, especially the, uh, electricity, but other input costs have also risen strongly. So it's not a happy environment at the moment. And the view is that they'll, they'll use these, this operation, Pakisa, to really come together as, as stakeholders, government, business, labor, and academia, and others, to come together and really revisualize the industry. How can the linkage between um, mining and, say, for instance, manufacturing be strengthened? There's a lot of capital equipment that goes into mines, and that procurement spend could be better leveraged for the manufacturing industry. How can we find a win-win solution around beneficiation? This is a hot topic and one where there's a lot of fuzziness at the moment and actually seen as a bit of an impediment to investment by the upstream mining industry. And there'll be other focus areas, and but it's really about creating the, the environment for investment and for realizing the potential of, of the industry. And that's gonna take place in October. The, it's, it's a methodology where the stakeholders come together in different labs. Um, there's going to be six streams under the mining Pakisa. And the uh, our hope is that these impediments to investment and realizing the potential, and, and as well as other impediments uh, currently facing the industry around energy constraints, et cetera, can be dealt with uh, in a more uh, collegial atmosphere and a Team South Africa type approach so that we can start uh, getting the industry back onto a footing of, you know, at the moment it's really in a, a regression, back on a footing of some sort of growth and future. Thanks, Terence. That is the second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.